Several years ago, when I had the privilege of assuming command of the U.S. Navy's largest aviation squadron, it was in bad shape and getting worse. We were tearing up airplanes and we were hurting people. Every day, there were incidents that made us feel like we were getting by just on luck. Thinking back on it now, I'm shocked that we weren't crashing airplanes. I had over 115 airplanes in my squadron, and many of them looked like this. And we're clearly in no shape to fly. But I had a couple of dozen others that we used every day to train the Navy's newest fighter pilots to fly the F-18 Super Hornet. Unfortunately, those airplanes, while they looked okay on the outside, they were in just as bad a shape on the inside as this one. Can you imagine getting into an airplane that's got five, 10, even over 30 different reasons why it should be grounded, and then taking it flying and doing things like dropping bombs and dogfighting and trying to land on an aircraft carrier at sea? It seems like such a silly question to ask, yet all around me every day, I had hundreds of smart, talented, and capable people who were making those sort of bad decisions. But it wasn't their fault, and it wasn't the airplanes. Our problem was our culture. Somehow, our familiar culture of a high degree of individual accountability, extreme levels of professional and technical knowledge, the ability to balance competing priorities while still managing risks, all of that had gotten so far out of whack. Changing culture in a large and complex organization is hard no matter in the absolute best of cases. But imagine now people who are unfamiliar with the changes that we're talking about. There's uncertainty about the path ahead. Oftentimes, they'd rather just put their heads down, hope for the best, and deal with the circumstances that they, that they see themselves in today. And think about all the leaders you've known who've talked about the change that they're going to bring, the improvements that are, are going to come, how things are going to be better. Yet, it's almost as soon as their plans are rolled out, it seems like they're falling apart. So as we think about making change in an organization, it's no wonder that so many times we try to change the culture of our teams and we fail. So we could talk about all the reasons why failure upon failure was allowed to pile up in that squadron. But the real learning comes from thinking about how we were able to successfully transform the culture in that very broken organization. In spite of the, all of the challenges that we faced, in spite of all the expectations that we would fail, the transformation was remarkable. Injuries became rare. Our incident rates plummeted. Our productivity skyrocketed. Goals I had set and expected to meet in 24 months, we achieved in less than nine. It was a remarkable turnaround. Now, just for a moment here, I should make sure that you understand the culture that I'm talking about isn't what maybe some might be thinking of. You know, things like beanbag chairs and ping pong tables at work. Well, I'm a big fan of that sort of thing. The culture I'm talking about defines how an organization works. Our culture comes from our values, our beliefs, our behaviors, and we see it across our organizations every day. One of the primary roles of leadership is to define the culture they want in their teams. But if you asked a leader and they answered honestly, they would probably admit that as they go about doing their work every day, there's an element of fear that goes with them. I know that fear. That fear comes from this, the doubt and the uncertainty that you have that the expectations you're setting for your team about whether or not they'll actually be able to meet them. I had over 1,300 people in my squadron, all talented, capable, accomplished, and yet every day I feared the decisions that they were making. They knew what the right decisions were, and they knew how to do those things, but our culture simply wouldn't let them do the things that they should be. So I had to create a new culture. I had to create a culture that was healthy and it was robust. It had to be highly reliable so we could consistently and we could safely execute our job. The pillars upon which a culture of high reliability are built include integrity, which means that you can count on people to do what they say and to do what they're expected to do. 
They have the courage to do what is right and to hold others and even themselves accountable. Formality means that people follow procedures. They follow rules. They don't tolerate unauthorized shortcuts. When you're thinking about knowledge, it means that you, do, you know not only what you do, but why you do it. And you're constantly learning and incorporating that learning back into the work that you're doing every day. When you have strong team backup, your fear just melts away. Because you know that there are dozens, perhaps hundreds of people out there looking for and thinking about what it is that you haven't found or thought about. And oh, by the way, you're expecting them to tell you about it when they find it. And so when they do, when they bring you that news, even if it's bad news, you really value it. Lastly, a questioning attitude means that people don't just assume that things are going to go okay. They're looking for those unexpected points of failure. They're anticipating what could go wrong. They don't just assume, they go out and verify. And when you have a team that's built on a foundation like this, trust grows like wildfire. So when you define your culture, the words matter. The definitions of those words matter even more. What matters most of all is that those words and definitions get into the minds of the people on your team so they guide the decisions that they're making every single day. Now, I said earlier, one of the fundamental roles of leadership is to define the culture for the team that they're leading. The other equally important role is to ensure that every member on the team knows what is expected of them to bring that culture to life. I did this by talking to every single person in my squadron, in one-on-one -on -one meetings, in small groups, in large groups, in town hall sessions, in welcome aboard briefings, even in their performance reviews. I emphasized my expectations for them to bring our culture to life. But the point I emphasized above all else was that I expected them to hold me to the same expectations I was laying out for them and everybody else in the squadron. And as a leader, if you really want to get accountability going, then enable and empower every person on your team to hold you accountable. When you have an entire team that's holding each other accountable, including the senior leaders, then change can happen very, very quickly. And in this culture of high reliability, where people are empowered, they know what's expected of them, and they're holding each other accountable, remarkable things can happen. Like the day I was walking across my hangar, heading out to the flight line, and I saw a sailor, he had just graduated from high school and had been in my squadron for less than two weeks. But a couple of days prior, I'd been talking to him about my expectations for him and our culture. I waved, and then as I stepped onto the flight line, he yelled, Sir, stop! You can't go out there without your helmet and your goggles. Imagine the youngest, most junior person in the, in the organization telling the most senior person that he was making a mistake. In that one instant, when he intervened in my mistake, he demonstrated all five of the pillars of our culture. Now, that's a simple story, but the point is that started happening all across the organization. I went from being an individual who was trying to change the behaviors and habits of 1,300 others to having hundreds of folks that were using these pillars to change the behaviors of everybody where they worked every day. Now, there's this myth out there that leadership in the military is somehow easier because we wear a rank on our collars and we can just tell people what to do that couldn't be further from the truth. The essence of great leadership varies not one bit from the military to corporate to commercial to private to government organizations. What I know for sure is that people on a team, they want to be led. They want to know that what they're doing is meaningful and that they're contributing in a way that adds value to the team. They want to have expectations set for them and they want to be able to achieve them. What they want is a leader who can lead without fear. When you lead without fear, you empower your team to do the sort of things that they're asking to do every single day. So we started 
accomplishing that sort of, that sort of outcome on a day in and day out basis. I set expectations for every one of the members of my team that they could stop any sort of activity that they felt was unsafe. And pretty soon, instead of having a supervisor on every single job, I started having people, no matter what they were working on, they became their own supervisor. They took an attitude that they could solve their problems. I empowered them to make decisions on the best interest of the squadron and on behalf of myself. And I also accept the expectation that if any of them saw something that as it shouldn't be, they had to put a stop to it. In our old culture, nobody would speak up. There was no reason to do so. In our new culture, I gave recognition and awards to people who took the chance to say, hey, there's something wrong. And pretty soon, it started to spread. And after just a short period of time, we put these airplanes back together and we started doing the sort of awesome flying you see here. But more importantly, we put a team back together. We put a team that was built upon a healthy and on the foundation of a healthy and strong culture. In a culture of high reliability, one thing is absolutely sure. People feel empowered and they feel equipped and they feel capable of making the sort of decisions that are expected of them every day. As I think about those sailors that I led and the challenges that we met, I have a question that I would ask of you. In the teams that you're a part of, do you think that based upon the stated values of your organization, that people can make the decisions that the organization is ex expecting of them? And further, do you believe that there's enough substance in the definitions of their vision that people would be able to know how to use it to guide their behaviors and the work that they're doing every day. If you've laid out your culture, if you've defined it, if you've communicated it, and then lastly, if you've given people the necessary knowledge and ability to act, then you can be sure that you can lead without fear. As I think about all the challenges that we came through, what I absolutely want to leave you with is that it's not easy. There's going to be challenges. People are going to have to make decisions. They're going to have to make decisions that they're not sure that they should be. But you want them to fall back on the culture that you built in the organization. You want them to know that they have to make those decisions and they have to guide their behaviors nonetheless. And if you're leading a team that's built on a foundation with a culture like that, then I can assure you, as a leader, you have absolutely nothing to fear. Thank you.